Last NBA offseason, my wife and I became season ticket holders for the Charlotte Hornets with the objective of selling the majority of the tickets so that we come out at the end with a profit. I've completed several videos on the topic, making a series of sorts, showing you the experience at different checkpoints in the year. My last update was at the All-Star break where I told you guys I needed to sell one more game in order to pass the $1,000 profit mark for the season. Since many of you watching this video are new to my channel, I'll show you the entire chart once more. This is a spreadsheet that I used throughout the season. Here it is in its entirety. The only game that we sold that I didn't cover in the All-Star break video uh, was this third to last game of the season right here, April 2nd Raptors game we sold. And that put us over the $1,000 profit mark for the season. So our cost for the two seats by the way, section 116 row T, $4,433.28 cost. We ended up returning $5,552 in all of the Ticketmaster and otherwise sales that we did. That gives us an end of year, end of experiment, end of season one total profit, $1,118.72. That's selling 26 games, essentially going to the other 15 for free. Speaking of going to the games for free, one of the reasons that we decided to even try this was to try and go see Luka Doncic basically for free. That game happened since the All-Star break, so I'll share some of the footage with you here. We had the additional benefit of the fact that the Mavericks traded mid-season for Kyrie Irving. This is before their season fell apart. So, of course, you guys know now. This Mavericks team didn't even make the playoffs, but we were so, so excited to go see them. These Buzz City shirts were free to the first 5,000 in attendance. We arrived a full hour early just to see their warm-ups. Luca finished the first half with these back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back triples. He's got a dozen points to lead them in scoring. Hayward has 11. Look at another one. Well, that's, that's when you made your own toys yeah. back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another three by Luca. Ultimately, we would see Luca drop a masterful 40, 12, and 8. Of the $1,118.72 profit that we made off the sale of the tickets, I don't, I don't have exact numbers for you, but you see me wearing this. You know, we bought attire, we bought hoodies, some shirts some hats. At a few of the games, we bought food, and at most of the games, we at least bought a drink, a soda of some sort, because I was booing at these games really loud. I needed to lubricate my throat a little bit. I'm guessing as fans, we probably spent half of this profit throughout the course of the season on year one. I don't think that our cost will be that high on just random fun expenses going to games in later seasons, though, because now we've got some of the clothes, right? We're not going to need some clothes in year two. So I think we'll actually hang on to more of the profit next year. Before I get into my plan and my thoughts on season two of this experiment, I'll show you on that final game we went to right there, that, that last Rockets game, Friday, April 7th, they did a bunch of giveaways. So we got a few things for free. We did, however, we bought, I bought this LaMelo Ball jersey right here that I'm really excited to wear next season. That was a buy one, get one free sale. So my wife actually got the same exact jersey. So we got two for the price of one. Some of the free things they were giving out, this reversible bucket hat, you got the bluish teal side and then you can flip it inside out and it, it goes black. I think that's pretty cool. Got that for free as well as this sick poster, man. Here we can document what the Hornets lineup was for our first season as season ticket holders. We got two of these, two bucket hats and two posters, free of charge. There were also like little giveaways from other companies that night too, like Dunkin' Donuts came, gave us free gift cards also, so shout out to them. Let me talk about year two, because obviously this went well enough that we're gonna do it again, and I expect to make money to profit on this again. It's been an absolutely loaded off season for the Hornets, believe it or not. Uh, things that I think all point upward for the value of the tickets, of the game tickets. First, of course, we had the Miles Bridges suspension finally announced this offseason. He's only going to miss 10 games next season. Given we retain him, that's actually not that bad. We'll, we'll be so much more competitive 
next season with him on the floor. The biggest story, of course, for the Hornets this offseason was taking the number two overall pick from the NBA draft lottery, the Victor Wembenyama draft. I was filming our reaction for the live draft reveal to share with you all. The fourth pick in the NBA draft goes to the Hornets. The Houston Rockets. Come on. Oh, come on. The third pick belongs to the Portland Trailblazers. Come on! <laughs> come on. Okay. Please. The second pick will be made by first, please, first, please. The Charlotte no, Hornets, no. and that means that the number one pick no. in the 2023 no. NBA Draft goes no. to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh. The San Antonio Spurs walk away with the first overall oh. pick in the 2023 draft. The right to draft oh. a paradigm shifter, a generational talent in Victor Wembanyama. Oh, that's brutal. I mean, it's, Second is still awesome. W once we were top two, I felt like, oh my God, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. After the dream scenario of Victor Wembanyama as a Hornet kind of faded away, I, I can't realize it was a good result for the Hornets. I'm excited for that number two overall pick, given the fact that I've heard so many good things about Scoot Henderson. Personally, these rumors, these Zion Williamson rumors, moving the two pick for Williamson, that sounds real good to me. Okay, if I was the Hornets, I might try and get that deal done. Either way, I'm going to be excited for next season. I think the fact that we moved from the fourth best odds up into the number two pick, you can argue that's definitely going to increase the ticket value, the, uh, watchability of this team now unless we completely screw this up we're gonna have a really relevant second star beside Lamelo ball if we do still have that number two pick heading into draft night i will post an upload here on youtube of my instant reaction to whatever we do with that pick officially i'm really pumped for season two the second attempt at profiting off of nba tickets as a season ticket holder please subscribe below so that you don't miss any of the updates in the future because what I think, what I'm really hoping for, is the Hornets progressing and getting better as a team. Let us sneak into the playoffs, even the, just the play-in tournament. Something extra, I think it would be fun to cover that on the channel. Trying to profit off the postseason, not just the regular season, because that's a whole different game. I'm also really interested in seeing how this mid-season tournament, whatever... I'm interested to see how that affects the bottom line from a season ticket holder's perspective. Does that take away home games from someone like me? I don't know. So I will definitely cover that on the channel. I hope this upload was both enjoyable and informative. I will see you after draft night next time on Welty.